In this video, we'll be discussing grids, spacing, and units. How and when to use the different types of classes that are built into Knockout. On the columns page of the style guide, you'll see that we have two sets of grid classes. We have viewport unit based columns, and we also have percentage unit based columns. And those will be used in two different contexts. Uh, we'll start with the viewport unit based columns. Now we have uh, a grid image turned on on the background, which you can access at any time by going to the body element at the all pages level and just toggle the hide and show. And that will show us how if we go to our column wrapper class, which simply sets the flex properties so that our columns display side by side instead of stacking, we can add margin left medium. And you'll see that our one column div still stays uh, one column's worth of width. The percentage based columns are going to are going to work a little bit differently. You'll see that they don't necessarily land on grid because obviously a fifth isn't evenly divisible within to, within our 14 column grid. So if we add some margin to this guy, it's going to change the width of the column. You'll see that it shrinks to take up one fifth of the parent div. Now I can delete this uh, second column and add four more. So we have five fifths. We can see a little bit better how deleting these just causes them to grow. Whereas our VW unit columns are going to stay the same width no matter what. So the VW unit columns are great for layouts when you want to define something on grid. Maybe you want, uh, you know, four columns on the left side for a sidebar and you want the remaining 10 on the right side. Uh, you would use view, viewport units, but if you have, say, you know, a three up or a four up within some certain container that might have padding or margin on it, and you just simply want to divide the space evenly, you would use a fifth, a fourth, a uh, third, half, and so on. Now, anytime that you see these little tags that say view more classes, at the tablet viewport, you can switch to tablet and you're going to see that there is uh, our desktop suite and then also our tablet suite. And additionally, if we go down to mobile, you will see the mobile suite. And these are all color coded, so it's easy to tell the difference. And the way that these work is that you can stack them. So say I've got uh, this column that says column, uh, and it's an, it's an eight column. Uh, say I want it to be 10 column at tablet. I'll just add 10 column tab. And then when we switch over to tab, the eight is going to have grown to 10, right? Or, you know, we could change that to 12 column tab and you'll see it grow that way. We can also add, you know, we can go down to mobile and say four call mob. And so you can have these columns adjust on the fly across different viewports just by stacking different classes. Now, one other feature of the grid system is our margin offset classes. 
So assume that we want a row of uh, three identical columns below this main image right here. Start by creating a column wrapper div to set our flex properties. I will drop a column div in there. We're going to call it third. We're going to give it some padding of extra small. Uh, let's just go ahead and do small. And that is going to give us a half a column of padding all around. And I'm going to triplicate that to fill out our row. I'm going to add a headline and call it an H2. But we're going to give it small as a size and then margin bottom extra small. And uh, throw a little paragraph. Or actually, let's just throw a short text block underneath it. Now, this works fine as is. But suppose we want a background color within these blocks. background, uh, let's say neutral one. And we want to give that some padding that is extra small. We'll do that, let's see, back, uh, yeah, background, neutral one. Padding extra small, drop this content in. Uh, actually, I'll copy it, paste it, and I'll drop content in. Same here. The thing that we see here is that we're now off grid. We want this full column of spacing in the center, but we don't want this half column on the outside. We might not even want this. Uh, we also don't want this top padding or this bottom padding. Now, we do want this uniform uh, all around padding because that can give us, you know, our, our full column worth of padding, you know, horizontally and then also vertically. Uh, it's just this outside stuff that we don't care for. So we go back up to the column wrapper, and since we're using padding small on each of these, margin offset small, and what that is going to do is give you negative margin that is going to offset the positive margin, and you'll see that we are on grid. So since we do have a, an entire an entire uh, column worth of spacing. We're probably going to want to change this to margin bottom medium. And then we have universal uh, interior padding like CSS grid, but we're using flex. So we can also change this if we would like to uh, say uh, half tab. And we can just append this to all these guys. And we might even want to go to uh, hole for mobile. Have them all stack.
So this is going to give us consistent grid-based spacing. Um, it's going to allow us the flexibility to wrap these in different ways. Um, and uh, it is going to, yeah, just keep us on grid. Knockout's padding suite is all based on VW units. So it is all grid relative. And so you'll see that if we change the viewport size, that padding is shrinking and it's growing. And it's always three columns for extra, extra large, you know, relative to the screen size. So if you look, uh, you know, if we scroll down our paddings page, you'll see we've got extra, extra large, extra large, which is two columns of padding. Large, which is a column and a half. Medium, which is one column. Small, which is a half column. Then we get into pixel sizes. So extra small is 20, extra extra small is 10, and we've got zero in case we need to zero out the padding. We've also got side specific padding for top, right, bottom, and left. And then we've got padding Y, which is top and bottom, and padding X, which is top, which is left and right. And then for each of these sets, if we go to the tablet viewport, you'll see that we've also got a section for tablet specific classes. So if you wanted to go from padding extra, extra large at desktop to padding medium at tablet, you can just stack the, you know, padding tab medium. And that's going to allow you to adjust these on the fly across viewports. And then also on mobile, you'll see that uh, a suite of mobile classes are introduced. Now one thing that you'll notice is for padding small, for instance, or padding medium is one whole columns worth at desktop. There's also one whole columns worth at tablet, but it becomes a half a column at mobile. And a lot of these classes standardize to a half a column at mobile so that you don't have to declare every single viewport over and over again. The vertical spacing remains similar, but it's also standardized. Um, but we're going to have an even gutter for most of these classes. Now, if you want your gutter to be different, if you don't want it to be a half column across all of these different uh, sizes, you can go into padding small and say, I want 7.143 VW. You can add that on each side. And you can just go in and you can go in and actually adjust these. Let's see. Seven point one. One one four three VW seven point one four three VW seven point one four three VW seven point one four three VW and now all of these are going to resize to a wider gutter and you'll see this align once we get down to vertical mobile. Now if you wanted it to be even smaller, you could do the same thing. 
Or we could maybe do it as uh, 10 pixels. And so you can customize this either based on however you develop, whatever margins you prefer, or, you know, on a project-to-project -project basis. Margins are very similar. We use uh, the same naming conventions and also the same units of measurement. We've got top margins. We've got right margins. We've got bottom margins. And we've got left margins. And then we do have a suite of pixel-based margins. So left, uh, let's see. So top, right, bottom, and left. That's going to give you 5, 10, and 15. You could change this if you want these to be, you know, units of four. You could change these to four, eight, twelve, and then just make your adjustments. Right, let's see if I can even. Let's see, so that would become twelve. This guy would become eight, and I'll go ahead and rename these eight, twelve, and for our last guy, four. And you can add to these. You know, if you wanted to add, you know, 16. But the idea is that, you know, they can be customized to suit whatever your approach is, and they don't have to remain exactly how it is out of the box. You are going to want to also update those across the different viewports. We've got our tablets, so that would become 4A12, mobile would also become 4A12. So it's a little work just to make sure that you cover all your bases. But once you've got it set up and customized to the way that you prefer to develop, uh, that's what's going to make things go faster. For our spacing, we do use VW units for anything above 30 pixels, and under 30 pixels, we use pixels. Uh, for our typography, we use pixels. We found that using a responsive unit, the text ends up being optimized for the midpoint of a given viewport, but it becomes either too big or, or too small to be easily readable. Uh, so we use pixels, so we optimize for the readability. We do convert to VW units above 1440, so it scales up. So that you don't have to make manual adjustments to all those, the, to the typography up there. But we also use for any measurement that is relative to the font size. Uh, like, for instance, for line heights, we use percentages. And for letter spacing, we use EM so that if the font changes, the line height or the letter spacing is going to change relatively, and that that doesn't have to be recalculated for a different pixel measurement or something along those lines. This is our system, but this can, you know, somewhat easily be set up to use, you know, uh, REM units if you want to use your body as the, you know, the base unit. For that, uh, you will have to go into the custom code. We do have calculations for large viewport type, and you would need to make these adjustments from pixels to EM units and 
do the decimal to percentage conversion and all that type of stuff. But it can be done. And once it's done, it'll be customized to your way of working and you don't have to do it again.